Hey everybody, this is World War Guy here today, and today I kind of want to talk about really collecting, especially for beginners. Um, a lot of people, you know, watch my channel, they watch other people's channels, whether it's history, collection, reenacting, etc. And uh, they find it interesting, they really want to get into it, and that's great, and I think that's a great idea. But I do want to explain some of the things you should think of before you get into this hobby, because if you really are... Um, I guess devoted to this hobby, you really want to put the time, effort, and money into this hobby. Uh, you really got to know some things before you get into it. If you want to buy one or two things, you know, it is what it is. But if you really want to get into it, there's a lot of things you really need to consider. Now, the first one you want to consider is really the money. Collecting is not a cheap hobby. Uh, whether you're collecting specific items or you're just collecting a little bit of everything, at the end of the day, it's going to cost you, you know, a, a pretty penny, a, a pricey penny. Um, of course, when you're, you're buying things, you know, things aren't cheap, you know, helmets can be expensive. Um, rifles obviously can be expensive, uh, things with names, things with specific unit markings, things like that will add up to the price. So when you get into this, just know that you're not going to be spending just a hundred dollars on your collection. I mean, my entire collection, I can tell you costs more than a hundred dollars. But it's something that I want to do. So if you want to spend that money, that's good. You know, go ahead. But just be aware that things can be expensive. You, know, you can get things maybe like this for, I don't know, $10. Or you can get a, a helmet, which I don't have to show right now, but a helmet for, you know, uh, $500. Or, you know, some helmets even go for $10,000. Um, of course, you know, depending on what you want, it's going to cost you a lot of money. And even if you just buy, you know, the cheap things, you're probably going to buy a lot of them. And that's still going to bring you up to hundreds of dollars if you buy a lot of them so just know that when you get into this hobby you are going to be spending some major cash especially if you do collect you know as much as i do when you really want it to grow you see some other youtubers uh they have their war rooms it's filled you know and that's just how how it is there's nothing wrong with it but just know that you're going to be spending a lot of money on it now aside from spending money you probably want to you know figure out what you want to buy the, the important thing about collecting is to collect what you want um, oftentimes I see, especially young collectors, you know, like they're, they're teenagers, they're just getting into it. They're not too sure. They don't have much guidance. A lot of them think they need to buy the best items, the most expensive items, things that will make other collectors go, wow. And although those items are really cool, and if you have the money and the knowledge, uh, to buy it, go ahead, but you don't have to buy it. There, there, in collecting, there are no rules, really. If you want to just buy, I don't know, mess kits, Put all your money and knowledge into mess kits and get the mess kits you personally want. If all you want is, you know, trench art, again, do the research, buy trench art, spend the money on that. You really don't have to buy what other people think is cool. You know, I love Belgian items from World War One, World War Two. My collection is really small of it, but that's something that I really want to, to continue my collecting on. A lot of people, they're not too interested in that. And it's nothing wrong with it, it's just majority of people prefer maybe... World War II German items or World War II American items, you know, things that are a bit more easy to find oftentimes is what is more popular. So again, buy whatever you want, whether it's military booklets, helmets, mess kits, belts, trench art, canteens, etc. Don't worry about what other people are going to think because at the end of the day, it's your collection, it's your money. You you should spend it on what you want. So now you figured out that you, you got the money to buy these items and you got a general idea of the items you want to buy. But now you got to realize, is it fake? Is it real? Is it in good condition? Um, any other thing? Are these the correct markings, etc.? And that's really where the education part is going to come into. You got to do a lot of research. Now, luckily, today in you know 2021, there's plenty of websites online. You can easily go type something and find it. There's videos you can find online. For example, if you follow my channel, uh, although I don't go into too much detail on certain items, you can still get a, a better knowledge of original items than, you know, just not knowing. Um, some videos you'll see, they really do explain like what the markings mean. Uh, for example, see an arsenal. Uh, they talk about World War I firearms and they'll go into really so much detail in the rifle. You'll know the rifle in and out. Um, but... You know, besides website, there are books. And books are probably the better aspects of research because there's a lot of information in them that you just can't get online. So, for example, I have here FN Mauser Rifles uh, by Anthony Vanderlyn. I'm not going to do a book review, but for example, this book specifically talks about Mauser Rifles 
uh, built by FN and uh, manufactured by FN. And this really just goes into a whole bunch of details. So after reading this, I understand, you know, what to look for in FN Mauser rifles. Uh, I know what to, what's correct, what's not correct, etc. Uh, you can also get other books. These are a bit on the cheaper end because they're more mainstream. Books like this, Fighting Men of World War II, Allied Forces. Now, these books are great because it talks about, you know, the Americans, British, Soviets, French, and then smaller countries like Belgium, Netherlands, I think even Brazil, Denmark. Uh, and these are great. They have pictures. They have different items. This is more your, like, general knowledge items. So, like, you know, M1 helmets, uh, you know, parkas, grenade pouches, things like that. The only thing I would say with mainstream books like this is to kind of be wary of accuracy. I know in this book specifically, they were saying the Belgians use M95 Monlickers. When the Belgians never use Monlickers, they always use Mausers, both World War I and World War II. So things like that you do want to be wary of. But at least this is a good start, so you can at least acquire the knowledge of different items, like what they are. You know, M1 helmet, Brody helmet, SSH-40 helmet, etc. And then, you know, again... Small, smaller mainstream books is a D-Day kit. Uh, again, gives you a decent like idea of different things that were used during the war. Um, so books like this will really help you figure out what to look for in an item, whether it's post-war, early war, etc. Now, when you're doing your research, though, you also, you know, a lot of people like to build mannequins or displays, things like that. Uh, but sometimes it's a little hard to figure out what to put on the mannequin for a certain time period for a certain soldier. And that's when, you know, any books or original photographs will help. So, for example, you can get books. This just talks about the German Africa Corps. Um, doesn't talk about specific items, but it has a lot of original photos. So you can see, oops, <laughs> you can see a lot of uh, different equipment that was used on the Africa Corps that you probably wouldn't find too much on the Internet. So original photographs will help you in your collection because you can figure out, oh, okay, look, this helmet was used with, with this unit or whatever or this time period and now i know more about the item um i don't have an example on the table but you know uh like marine corps cross flap canteens you know you look at pictures of of um i don't know battle of guam and you can see them with those canteen covers and it's like oh great now i know that this canteen cover at least the style was used in the battle of guam so basically you're going to spend a lot of money you're going to need to do a lot of research, and you're going to know what you want to buy. Then these seems like daunting tasks, but really it's, it's part of the fun. Uh, surprisingly enough, the research is really fun because you know, you're know you stuck on something. You just really want to find more info about it. And then when you finally find the info, it's like you know it's like a, the end of a treasure hunt. You found the treasure. It's, it's a great satisfaction. It's great because now you have that knowledge they can apply to your collection. Um, you know, the money is probably the only downfall. Don't get me wrong. I totally don't like spending a lot of money on items, but... You know, it makes me happy. It displays nice in the room. It's a piece of history that I'm very happy to have. And really, at the end of the day, collecting military is really to make yourself happy. I mean, it's like any other hobby. It's to satisfy your boredom. It's to, you know, really just have a good time. Um, some people do do it for the money. You know, they buy and sell. Um, that's a little harder to do because you're going to have to look in the right places. You know, you can't buy something at retail price because you're not going to make any money on it. On it so... But that's a whole different whole different story. So really, if you're starting off, you know, if you're getting to the, the collector collecting world, um, hopefully this video helped you guys. Hopefully you now kind of have an idea of what to expect when collecting and so on. And uh, yeah, so I hope the video helped you. If it did, drop a like, write a comment, share and subscribe. But besides that, you guys have a great day.